Okay. Hey, well, welcome everyone. Uh, Ricky Shabazz here, um, President of San Diego City College. For those who are tuning in on YouTube, this is our college council. This is our highest level of governance at the college where we have represent representatives from all of our constituency groups. I uh, appreciate everyone uh, chiming in. Um, we normally have an agenda, so I'll start, uh, I'll begin by sharing um, the agenda. And you will see the respective uh, representatives from College Council on the agenda. Uh, we normally do not take um, questions off of the agenda, but you are more than welcome to email the representatives of your constituency groups. Uh, and so I'd like to just uh, begin with some with a roll call to make sure uh, we have on the record who's with us uh, today. And so uh, Paul Alexander, President of the Academic Senate, If, if you're with us, if you can unmute yourself. Uh, I'm here. Thanks, Paul, appreciate it. Uh, Luis Perez, who's acting as the president uh, elect for the Academic Senate. Right, I know that Masa um, is the president elect and I think I saw Masa uh, with us. Yes, I'm here. Great, thanks, Mawson. Again, congratulations on on being so, voted. Uh, I'm not sure if somebody Thank sent you. him a, a Zoom invite. The only thing he has is a YouTube. Luis has is a YouTube thing. Okay. Um, I can send it to him now. Quick technicality. So Luis is still technically the the the, the past president or whatever, and Masa will be uh, beginning on technically July first. Perfect. Thank you for sharing that. Um, with us, Paul. Um, Tilly, I believe, is in interviews. Um, so um, Jeannie's been standing in for her. Uh, Robbie. Here. Robbie Yule. I'm here. Great. Thank you. Um, Caesar. Good afternoon. Here. Denise. Here. Great, thank you, Denise. Uh, Susan. I'm here. Great, thank you, thank you for joining us in, in Zoom. Majda. Hello, Ricky, I'm here. And I already called out Jeannie. As a matter of fact, I see Jeannie on my screen there. Hello, Jeannie. Present. Uh, uh, Nadia, uh, Chair of Chairs. Okay. Um, Oscar, our student representative? He just emailed to say he would not be in attendance today. Great, thank you. Uh, Javier, Vice President, Associated Students. And as a heads up, Nadia is logging on now as we speak. Great. Um, Awana. Good afternoon, everyone, I'm here. And last but certainly not least, Roxanne. I'm here. Perfect. So um, we've we've done the, the roll call, and uh, if I could ask for a motion for approval of the May 28th minutes, those minutes were emailed out to folks um, prior uh, to the meeting. Let me try to see if I can share those if folks would like to see the meeting um, minutes. But if while I'm doing that, if anyone would like to um, motion for approval of the meeting minutes. So Ricky, I'll motion to approve. And if, if I could ask you, and certainly Robbie, so, I recognize your voice, but if I could ask anyone when we vote on something to identify themselves. Uh, so we've got a first so by- This Robbie. is Robbie Ewell. Awana seconds the motion. Thank you, Awana. Um, any further discussion? about the meeting notes and you all should have these electronically and we post them on the college's uh, college council website as well hearing none if you all could use the hand feature um, 
for those that in support of approving the meeting notes, meeting minutes from April 29th indicate by raising your hand. Fabulous. Uh, if there's anyone uh, in opposition indicate so. Any mod anyone want to abstain from the meeting notes? Hearing none, motion uh, passes. Appreciate everyone. Let me stop sharing that document and share the agenda. And so we've got Dr. Bull with us, um, who uh, I've seen do an amazing job um, going around campus, uh, giving updates on the transfer and implications connected to pass, no pass. Matter of fact, I got a chance to sit in on uh, the uh, Instagram live that our wonderful counselors did. And I happened upon his section of that Instagram live. And frankly, it was informative you know, it, it seemed like such a positive thing for us as a college and a, a system of community colleges and the University of California, Cal State to say, hey, we're going to allow students to do pass, no pass or get W's and that sort of thing. And, and Bull has been doing a great job of talking to not only students, but our our colleagues about the implications of doing so because just because you can doesn't mean you should and so with that said hopefully i didn't steal too much of the presentation dr bull but i'll turn the turn the floor over to dr bull dr ross thank you for that um and thank you all for uh mitigating as much as we can in this uh pandemic um as the president mentioned earlier there's um a lot of um, nuance in most of the responses that we've been having. And so I just want to kind of provide a update and we're, if I can share my screen. Um, you can have to unshare yours and I can share mine. I just want to share a document that's possible. Yeah, it should be unshared. Okay, perfect, thank you. So this is a, a document that my team, at the Transfer Center, uh, Jocelyn Perez and Melody and Ace and James and the phenomenal team there has been kind of constructing and it's a living document. I know I've emailed you quite a bit for the city trans email, but we're looking at the implications and changing. It's very fluid from the UCs have kind of given this waiver and exemption, but then it also changed as well as each department. So with that being said, as my daughter just wakes up from her nap. Come on, Bob. Um, we've been um, putting together some robust information. So most UCs have given the exemption, but they're deferring to each department. So it's very, very important that you check in with each department. Um, UCSD, for example, majority of the departments, except for the math um, and bio department have allowed courses in their major prep to be passed on the pass. So I know the deadline was on Friday and as it stands, just because you can doesn't mean you should, right? And I'm, I'm using the same analogy. It's probably burnt out by now since I've ever heard it. But just because you go into a store, you can have Skittles we can have a nutritional item yeah. like yesterday. Okay. Have the Pepsi, go ahead. You can have nutritional items. Um, doesn't mean that you should go for the Skittles. You should go for that, which is nutritional. So meaning that there's implications. So one of them is graduate school. So if you plan on taking physics you're in your calculus courses right now, you wanna to go to medical school, you're in nursing, uh, you're trying to apply for a nursing program, anatomy, physiology, microbiology, those courses, you, you don't want to necessarily exercise the pass no pass option because the letter grade is indicative of your application status or your admission status. Same thing with if you're trying to go for a CPA licensure, you're going to take an accounting class, for example, in the future. Um, the managerial and financial accounting courses are going to be indicative of a letter grade. And so if you think the students can pass those courses, please don't exercise that option for your pass no pass. Um, in terms of um, some schools that are still open, I want to share this document as well with you. If you go to the Cal State Apply website, it allows you to see which schools are still open. There's a lot of schools open. I know they're waiting for the budget, governor's budget, but Humboldt is still open. Fullerton is open. Um, Cal State, um, Dominguez Hills is still open. Channel Islands is still open. San Bernardino, 
There's quite a few, um, some programs as well. SDC's business online major is open. So there's quite a few options out there for students to still apply to transfer to a four year, even though the deadline has passed. And so that information is also available. So please log on to our social media sites from our website or Instagram. We had Instagram live last week, as Dr. Shabazz mentioned, we'll continue to have those to give you guys um, the latest updated information. Um, and shout out to really quick, our honors program. We just got some data from our UCLA admitted students and I know Dr. Kelly Mayhew and Hector Martinez and Rudy and the phenomenal team behind that. We are having some high, high um, admission rates for our UCLA um, honors program. So we are, we're creating really a pipeline from San Diego City College to UCLA. To her to say that as a Trojan, but it's fact. So I'm really proud of our team um, for doing that. Almost 80 percentile, 80 percent of our students uh, who apply are getting in. So it's phenomenal. So transfer still happening. We're having virtual transfer appointments. The UCSD, UC Berkeley, UC Irvine, and UCLA are all doing transfer appointments with our students virtually. So they have a list of their admitted students, and they have a list of students that are interested, and they're conducting yeah. weekly appointments with them via Zoom. Yeah. Yes, Dad. So that's it for my end. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Dr. Bull. And if you wouldn't mind emailing me uh, about that honors program uh, data, and you know, definitely we've got great honors uh, program coordinators and, and the faculty who are assisting students with those honors contract. I'm working on an update for the board, Caesar and I, and I'd love to include that kind of data in the update for the board. So thank you to Kelly Mayhew and, and everyone involved with the honors program. Are there any questions for Dr. Boy as it relates to the implications of pass, no pass? And I believe Dr. Boy, you did this presentation already to the academic Senate uh, to the classified colleagues and supervisors that are on the line or watching via YouTube live, please share this information with your programs and your students. Uh, it is so imperative that people understand uh, that just because you can do a W or pass, no pass, that you know that there are in fact implications to those things. Um, any question, if you have a question, you can unmute yourself and ask Dr. Bull if you happen to have any. So Dr. Bull, if you would unshare your document uh, I'd appreciate it. And um, we will get back to the agenda. Thank you, Dr. Bull, for joining us in your, your presentation and staying uh, true to the time because we've got a ton of things to discuss uh, today. And speaking of that, I wanna go out of order uh, because we're probably gonna spend a great deal of time talking about some other things. And so what I wanna do, if I could, uh, is go to Dr. Murray and the IEPI. And it says governance process. Yes, the IEPI governance process. We have a number of visitors, uh, I believe a lot of them from either uh, leading from the middle. Um, and so Dr. Murray, let me turn it over to you to talk about the IEPI governance process. Hey, great, thank you very much. Um, yes, uh, we do have most of our team here, um, and I do have some slides to share. Ricky, if you could release the screen so that Absolutely. I can pull those up. Thank you. All right, so you can see our um, team members listed on this slide. This is the IEPI committee review project that started more than a year ago, um, came out of a joint request from the president's office and the academic senate to receive support from the statewide um, institution, institutional effectiveness partnership initiative to um, help us take a look at our committee and governance structures and um, <clears throat> research some options, gather input. And we are now at the point where um, we have a proposal. So various members of the work group are gonna take us through this. We have about 10 slides um, and I will hand it over to Alan Rivera, who's going to start us off. Right on, thanks Susan. Can you hear me? 
Perfect. Perfect. Um, so let me just get started with our, our why statement as far as um, our mission for with this IPI committee review project. So we recognize that the last few years we've been working in a heightened state of transition, uncertainty, and instability, and have often created structures in a reactive manner. Redesigning our governance structure is intended to enable us as a campus to reground ourselves in our values and priorities of inclusion, equity, and social justice. And the magnitude of our passion should be reflected in the results we are achieving, and our outcome should be commensurate to the amount of intellectual and emotional energy that we commit to our collective works. Uh, next point is just uh, the goal for this redesign uh, is to give us a direction, support, and structure that will enable us to put our energies where they will produce the most value and impact for students. That's the highlight. Um, clear and more efficient processes and structures will improve communication, allow for productive engagement and participation from all constituent groups. This redesign will enable the campus community to engage in the intentional equity work and sound practices that are vital to serve City College students. If I can go to the next slide, what we're going to see here um, is our current committee structure as it stands. Um, as everyone communicates to each other, we see all these energies right here. And this was our starting point, just being able to take an inventory of everything that we have. And I'll hand it off to uh, Sean. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm going to quickly kind of walk you through the process that this team has come up with with designing our um, structural model, which we'll see in just a moment. Uh, this process started in the fall of 2019 uh, with some campus wide summits that we had and we had campus constituents kind of come together and brainstorm how to uh, reposition existing committees into uh, what became houses. Uh, and so these are the models that we started working off with. And what we found is that there's about five main hubs, main houses that we have uh, in the City College um, campus community. Uh, so working from here, uh, let's go to the next slide. Um, we, uh, we had two considerations that we uh, were looking at. And the first consideration is that each of these hubs needs to have college council as its backbone. College council is going to be the body that these hubs report to and also seek guidance from. Uh, the other consideration we had is that we didn't want to create silos. Uh, these are not independent bodies. These are cohesive colleagues working together. And we wanted to ensure that uh, while these hubs are distinct, uh, they're not isolated from one another and that there's a collaborative uh, approach to this, this whole structural. Uh, we were, uh, we had taken our design actually inspired by the Disneyland park map. And where that comes from is when you go into Disneyland, the you know, first thing you do is kind of gravitated towards the center of the park, which is the castle, which represents the park's overarching theme, vision, and mission statement. Uh, the structure as a whole feeds off of this vision and this mission. And in our uh, guide here, we can see that College Council is in the center of that. Uh, now, while the distinctive uh, hubs branch off for that, uh, they, they still adhere to that college mission, uh, that uh, structural mission, and they also don't work independently. They have a cohesive uh, relationship with their adjoining uh, hubs. Let's go to the next slide. Um, so I'm going to walk you through this, and uh, you can take a look at this uh, grid um, uh, at your leisure to kind of get some more details, but we're going to start at 12 o'clock and we're going to work counterclockwise around. Uh, we came up with the hub of City Discovery. This was initially the student journey. Uh, City Discovery is going to um, house uh, committees and work groups that follow the student journey uh, from outreach through student success programs to um, completion. Uh, next, we see City Growth, which is our professional development hub. Uh, this is going to house the PDAC, uh, professional development work groups, uh, professional development programs. Uh, we have the constituency groups, which uh, includes the academic senate, the classified senate, the supervisory group, uh, and associated student government. City culture came from our um, city climate. And this includes our cultural and equity-minded programs. So world culture, student equity uh, programs uh, are all inclu included in this uh, hub. Next, we have city resources, uh, which is our um, 
our funding model. And this includes uh, budget development and funding processes. Uh, and finally, we have uh, our city design, which is our uh, planning hub. And this is where we find uh, Amparoc, uh identity and support for college-wide planning, accreditation, and institutional effectiveness. I'm going to go ahead and hand it over. Thanks, Sean. So another one of our considerations as we thought about what are the different areas of work that our college committees engage in um, and how they relate with college council is also kind of the annual calendar and cycle of institutional planning. So you'll see that this proposed calendar starts in the spring by bringing together leadership from the hubs, um, from our existing constituency groups and from college council to do some planning um, and review our priorities and set a direction for the coming year um, so that we have that in place as we enter the academic year. Then program review can be done within that framework. Um, it can shape um, messages that are shared at convocation. And then it allows each of the hubs to do their own planning in response. Um, and we're also recommending logic models as a format for these plans. Um, we've been using them in uh, several different areas and uh, people have found them helpful. We have an example of one at the end of the presentation if you're not familiar with that. So moving through the calendar, this sets us up for um, some of our resource allocation processes, faculty hire, hiring prioritization and our um, budget hearings. Um, it allows us to clarify our goals and how our work supports those goals when we are reporting to our accreditor. And it integrates with our existing cycles for course and program assessment. And then feeds in this information feeds into the planning retreat for the coming year. We also considered um, what a month might look like. Um, one of the efforts or the intentions behind this effort was that we reduce the overall number of groups and of meetings. And it may not look like that yet, but I think we are uh, trying to set some things in place that will get us there. <clears throat> One is that with this hub structure, we have a clear flow of information um, from all of these different sectors across the college into college council as the highest level of um, institutional governance. And um, what we're envisioning here would be somewhat of a change for college council um, in that the first meeting of the month would be more in, continue to be more informational, but the second meeting of the month would be receiving input from the hubs in light of the college priorities and really working more on collaboration and problem solving. Another benefit to this structure um, is that <clears throat> When we get a new initiative from the state, um, when there is a new grant, when there is a new project, we can use this structure to review the um, proposal and identify a home for it. Because there may be overlap with existing work that's already happening. And if you remember that diagram back on the second slide, one of the things we've experienced is a real proliferation of committees because our response, because we want to be inclusive, every time we get a new one of these initiatives is to create a new group. Um, but then that has to fit somewhere in the structure that has its own reporting relationships and the picture gets a little more complicated. So I'm gonna hand it off now and to talk a little bit more about the specifics of the hubs. Okay, so so within this um, structure, College Council sits at the, at the center of it. And just to reiterate, it would set the direction for the college. So at that annual retreat, it would set the direction for the college, re establish or reaffirm priorities. And then that would be direction for the hubs. Um, and that annual retreat would include the hub co-chairs, the ac academic senate leaders, the classified senate leaders, spa leaders, ASG leaders. Um, and together that review and reaffirmation or, or revision of any priorities would take place. 
And then from it, the logic model as a foundation for the coming years, outcomes and activities would be developed. And then that would be available in the upcoming year for the hubs all to, to articulate their own logic models with. And the intent of this is to create a planned stable schedule and processes for the hubs to interface with college council and with the rest of their work groups, additional committees, constituency groups that they need to work with. Um, and then the, within the, the, the city hubs, they would in the coming out of the, that spring retreat as we move into the new year, the hubs would develop their own logic models that would articulate with the broader college-wide logic model. And then they would use the work groups and committees within the hub to move work forward and um, align those logic, the hub logic models with it um, and the, and into the annual planning cycle and the, and the broader uh, logic model. Um, some of the specifics for how the hubs and the, the work groups within them will be de, um, created, are, they're still in development and there are recommendations that'll be coming out for how, how to do that. Um, but all of this work will be supported with um, toolkits and professional development to help facilitate it and to help streamline it and get all of the participants in it um, on, the, on the same page. And some of that would include a master calendar that holds all the timelines, the meeting schedule, um, the, there will be some technology and communication resources, um, uh, uh, some of the professional development around how to hold effective meetings, what can be done as pre preparation for the meeting, um, how, to, how to facilitate conversations within the meetings, how to assign tasks and move things forward. Um, and then we're, um, oops, I'm sorry, I'm actually stealing somebody else's slide, I just realized. <laughs> But I'll pass it. I'll pass it to Denise and Tilly at this point because I don't want to. I don't want to step on your thunder. No, no, not at all. Not at all. You you, you were getting warmed up, so it was good. So, like he said, we want to make sure that people are informed in the process and know what's going on. So um, there'll be the development of toolkits and other technology, communication, and resources to help guide people through um, to ensure that we have shared language and training. Um, we'll be doing some professional development and also the development of a master calendar. Um, that's something that we're looking to do. I think Tilly's, Tilly's still, she's in interview, so I'm just going to push forward. Um, and then we, we recognize the importance of evaluation and review. So we'll be testing concepts, of course, um, seeking regular feedback, and of course, ever assessing and trying to figure out how what we need to change, adjust, and refine. So it is a process of indoctrination for the campus because it will be a little different, but we'll be also very mindful of the learning that happens in that process and how we can make it better. All right, so this last slide is just an example of what a logic model template looks like um, in case this is something that you're not familiar with. I won't go into the detail on this yet, though that will certainly be covered in the professional development activities we would offer. Um, so our intent right now is to give you a status update. Um, we are going to be moving ahead um, with the type of retreat um, uh, and planning session in June that is um, mentioned in this model um, because we really have a need to do that given the circumstances that we are in. Um, We've just started to share this out with different groups. We were at Academic Senate yesterday. We will be at MPROC again tomorrow. We will be um, meeting with other constituency groups and committees as time is available. We intend to um, sit down with the groups that would fall under each of the hubs um, <clears throat> and have a conversation with them <clears throat> in terms of what their work is, where might it overlap, where, what are the connections um, to develop a new set of charges. So that work is something that we really want to do collaboratively. That's not going to be just done by the work team. So I will stop here. Um, we can take some questions from college council members and for other folks in the audience to know that there will be uh, more opportunities for input and discussion as we bring this 
um, and share this around the college. Great, thank you to, to Susan and everyone uh, who participated. We, you know, There's been a lot of work and effort put into this, not to mention uh, having to try to finalize these things in a virtual uh, world. Uh, and so thank you to, to everyone who participated. And uh, I, I didn't hear us, um, if we could, maybe Susan or Anna, Alan, um, Sean, any, anyone, I think even Ma Masa maybe, um, those who are on the lead um, from the middle, um, just, just a, a quick 30 seconds, um, what, what that is and, and how that might be connected to this. Um, I think the leading from the middle group is actually presenting at the next, oh, the okay. May 26th college council meeting. Yes. Um, and that uh, Lori Oldham is here as our SPA representative. Um, and I, and then uh, Denise mentioned that Tilly is also part of our group. I think that is our, our full work group for this uh, IEPI project. Okay. Okay. Well, great. And I, I appreciate that. And I apologize. I got confused um, with the, the leading from the middle um, group. Are there any questions for Susan and any other, any of the other presenters? Hearing, um, hearing none, um, we've got a jam-packed agenda. Thanks uh, to everyone who participated in the presentation. Let me bring back up the agenda. Denise, were you going to present on the enrollment management piece? Uh, I was not today. Um, if you want to just give an update, I mean, the committee's meeting regularly, um, but if you need the- Tilly, Tilly, Tilly asks for the item to be placed on the agenda for, um, so what we'll do is table that to next week, um, Tia, if we could be mindful of that. Um, Denise, I'll turn it over to you. You said you were gonna have a PowerPoint. You may wanna do a PowerPoint for number four, is that? Yeah, okay. Okay. And while Denise is bringing that up, let me let me you know publicly thank Denise and the entire team, uh, financial aid, um, their faculty, Berta, um, many are helping to uh, decide how we're going to spend our federal stimulus dollars. So thank you to the team led by uh, Denise Wisenhut, our, our great vice president of students. Thank you to our great president for sharing that. Um, this is. Uh, a great opportunity. I, I too want to extend a special thank you to so many people who are involved in this with wide and broad representation from Academic Senate, um, you know, our classified uh, professionals, and um, really the, the supervisor in uh, financial aid. They're, they're, you know, it's very well represented. And we have a student who sits on this committee. And so we were tasked um, by our, our esteemed president to. Um, figure out how we were going to spend these resources for, um, for our students. So I'm gonna give you just a brief summary. Um, okay. Yes, yes, okay. So um, we have about $3 million as a college that um, we are charged with um, providing resources under the CARES Act. And um, the CARES Act provides uh, stimulus funds for our students and institutional support for our campus as well. And so um, we were, so at minimum under the CARES Act, you have to provide resources for COVID impacted students. And so you have to provide at least 50% of direct student aid. So what that means is you got to get money in the hands of the students. And I want to commend our president because he has been um, at this table, the campus table, as well as the district table um, at the forefront of ensuring that we get money in the hands of the students. So there's been a tremendous amount of work that's happened in very quick order. And so I'm gonna share with you in some of this, um, uh, the commitment is there, but there will be some changes because we're like we're meeting tomorrow in terms of um, some of some of the uh, some of the resources and how we're spending it. But I just want to give you a highlight of what's going on. And I know I had to, thanks to Academic Senate for the opportunity yesterday. So it's all being done through this process called GIRA. If you're familiar with online, it's petitioning. Um, the students will be applying through our on 
our, our, our on campus, or I should say district-wide JIRA process for these resources. And there is an application that they have to fill out under COVID that shows that these students are COVID impacted. Um, the downside in that is that uh, in terms of eligibility, um, our undocumented students uh, through poor choices were not included in these resources. So I wanna commend our college president for um, quickly moving to ensure that we have resources for our students. And I'll talk about that a little bit later, our undocumented students. So there's an on-campus, um, uh, there's an online system that uh, students will be notified. The letter where the vice presidents are watching for the letter, we're prob it's probably gonna go out like tomorrow morning. The deadline um, right now is May 25th for, for submission. We recognize that it's the end of the, towards the end of the semester, but I'm sure for our students that any money is good money and happy to have it then. So what we're hoping to do is of course address our most, the students who are most in need. And those are our Pell students as the federal uh, government has outlined. And so um, for students who have, and, and we're actually the decision on this is tomorrow, in terms of units, we wanna give them at minimum $300 and 12 units or more, $400. So we're, we're doing some math on that part, but I wanna let you know that um, the application will go out. It won't discern how much money they're gonna get immediately. It won't be that, but we, we're working on our website presence. I'm working with, um, with Caesar on that right now. Um, so the deadline says May 22nd, but we just changed it to May 25th. So I'll let you know that um, before this, it went out of the middle of, of this being submitted. Uh, so that's what's going on there. The other piece is the remainder, which, is which will be the institutional aid side of it. Our president has communicated to the campus community um, many of the interests that our campus um, have, has identified. Um, some is in the way of just really some professional development for our faculty. It also includes technological support for our faculty as we know in the midst of transitioning for COVID that that is absolutely um, necessary to have supports for the faculty to do their jobs. Um, from a student service side, we're looking to do a program called Cranium, which allows us to just a really innovative approach of doing one-on-one -on -one connections with students, actually being able to do group modalities. It's kind of like Zoom on steroids. Um, we're hoping maybe we could even do that, you know, um, uh, extend that support to the, on the instructional side, because it's just a really, a really cool system. Um, and so we're working on that. Another piece that, um, that we have we've been made aware of, as the president said, is that there are some MSI resources. So because we are a, 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 an HSI institution, so we are working on that as well and filling out that, that application. If I can also just quickly talk about the work that's being done for DREAMers. Um, there are some questions in the JIRA application that I noted that will trigger um, a separate mailing that will go to students who've been identified in that application that'll go out probably tomorrow morning that will trigger a separate mailing on how students can get the money that for those students who weren't were not included in the plan. And so um, I've been working very closely shout out to um, to program manager Sanchez and Dean Valadez for their work and the great people at the Dreamers Resource Center because we're looking at um, expending um, and working with our president, he's worked very hard to get some $30,000 of support for, our, for those students. So it is an application, it's a little different in terms of content. The other one, the, the CARES one asks like things like US citizenship, we're not going there. Um, and so we're doing a lot of work to make sure that we connect with the students in spaces that they are to apply. And that's why we're talking to you today too, and you will be getting an email on this as well. So that's um, principally what's happening with the CARES resources. Great, thank you, uh, Denise. If you could unshare this, what I'd like to do is share um, a document then open it up to um, questions. And as Denise indicated, uh, this document was sent to the campus yesterday, and this is the draft of how we're proposing to spend what amounts to about 1.4 million of the institutional portion. And that number might go down, it may go up. And then you also heard Denise mention that um, we're gonna get an additional what amounts to about 300,000 through uh, DN and HSI. Uh, a lot of work went into this, a lot of sleep, sleepless nights and weekends for Denise and the team working on this. Are there any questions about the CARES Act funds and how uh, we're 
intending to administer, allocate what amounts to over, it's about 3.2, 3 3.4 million dollars uh, to either students and or the campus to support efforts that are underway to respond to the coronavirus. Any questions from College Council? Um, anything else, Denise, you want to share uh, about these efforts? No, again, thanks everyone for their support. And, um, you know, it's our students. If anyone needs it, it's our students. Great. Um, thank you. Again, let me bring up the agenda. So Denise talked about, so we went through, uh, we're gonna table number three, um, Till, uh, Tilly is with us, she's in an interview right now. Um, Denise uh, talked about number four and five. And unfortunately, um, I, uh, get to provide an update on the budget. Uh, I was in a call today where it was relayed that um, the governor's May revise could very well come out on Friday. And I use the term could. Uh, it was also relayed that it looks like community colleges are facing what amounts to about a billion dollars worth of reduction in funding because of the lost revenue. Overall, the state, according to an LA Times article, um, is facing about a 54 to $56 billion loss of revenue since February. Uh, and the Legislative Analyst Office is saying that community colleges could see a 10 to 20% reduction in funding. Um, and that's across the board, both general funds and restrictive funds. So even programs like EOPNS. Um, DSPS, those kind of programs. For those of us who lived through the 2008, to put it in perspective, the, the 54 billion eclipsed the 40 plus billion that the state had to cut during the uh, recession of 2008-2009. Um, City uh, College um, is going to be impacted in ways that I, can, I can't even imagine um, we are looking to lose between 40 and 51 positions because the majority of the college, the college's budget upwards of 90% is based on uh, salaries and benefits of our great uh, employees. Uh, and so the way that the district is really has to, is compelled to um, respond to the loss of funding from the state is to not feel many of the vacancies that we have. And again, we currently have 40 to 51 vacancies. Uh, we shared the list, I think last week or the week before, excuse me, the last meeting of college council. Uh, this has created the very unfortunate task to reorg the college because embedded in that are some deans, associate deans, managers, faculty. And let me go on record, you know, because we have our leadership from the academic senate um, here, uh, the largest number of employees impacted by the vacancies in the CERT list are in fact our classified professionals. Meaning there's a lot of positions that are gonna go on field, but the work is still um, there. And so we need to figure out a planned reduction uh, of, of, of work um, because we're going to have less employees. And so certainly students are going to be impacted. Now, we're challenged by the fact that history typically shows that when a recession occurs, and, and while this is not technically a recession yet, like a recession is defined by two negative quarters, we're going to have two negative quarters. We've already had one. We'll have the second one. It's only a matter of time. Um, and when we're session hits, usually the enrollment in community colleges increase. I mean, this is a unsustainable model that we receive less funding when we have more students and we receive more funding when we have less students, but such um, be the case that is the, you know, those are the rules of engagement. It's the way our system is set up. Uh, there is a need to reorg the college and I'm hesitant to use that term because it invokes a number of things. 
But when you have entire departments that no longer have employees, those departments have to report to someone. When you have supervisors who are not supervising people, I mean, I can go on and on about the impact of this. Uh, and so to that end, um, I'm calling an emergency meeting with campus leaders on Monday. Tia and Aaron will send out a meeting announcement. So that would include college council uh, and folks who are not on college council, our chairs uh, and the like uh, are being invited to a Zoom meeting where we can kind of un unpack this. We need to talk about the implications and best case scenarios. We have at least two uh, recruitments that are underway that are gonna be stopped. Uh, one of them will be the Dean of Exercise um, science, health, uh, athletics, that recruitment is going to be stopped. Um, frankly, we, we just can't afford it with these pending budget cuts. The same with a veterans counselor that we were moving forward. Uh, I put forth an email to Human Resources to stop that uh, recruitment. Our number one priority during this emergency as it relates to budget is to preserve our college, to prevert, preserve the employment of our contract employees. With that said, there is no doubt that adjuncts um, and our NANSAs are going to be impacted by this. Moving forward, we will not be able to use NANSAs unless it meets one of four areas. A someone is a student, someone is um, replacing someone out on leave, and the third um, option is a, a, a project that has an end date, um, and then lastly, you can use a NANS when there is a recruitment underway and you need someone to fill that space. Outside of those four areas, we will not be able to use NANSs on the categorical side or restricted side or the general fund. This is an emergency, folks, of a, of a magnitude that none of us have seen. You know, many of us lived through the 2008, 2009. Um, this is worse than that. We have people who have been in higher ed for 40 years that are saying they have never seen something of this magnitude and we need to restructure, reassess um, every single decision to ensure that City College is here for generations to come. Uh, I'm going to stop there um, and open it up to questions about this because this is this is this is the five um, five levels of 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 grief. Um, one of which is denial. Uh, I, I am somewhat in denial about this because normally, if you were going to talk about a restructure or reorganization, you would want to do it over a one or two year period. But when you lose forty to fifty one employees in a two month time span, you're compelled to respond a lot quicker than you normally would. Uh, are there any questions? And certainly you can unmute yourself and I would be happy to take questions of college counsel. I get afraid when people don't ask questions. I'm trying to find We do this. Well, if there if there are no um, questions, and, and if, again, if you would unmute yourself, if there are questions, what are we what we are planning to do? Are a series of things. One, I'm going to have an emergency meeting with the college leadership, and and let me define leadership: chairs, um, college council, deans, managers. Um, we're going to be meeting on Monday for about an hour to discuss this. We had a summit with the vice presidents last Friday on campus. The vice presidents have been instructed to work with their deans, um, classified staff, constituency groups to begin to propose, discuss what the organization would look like with one less dean, what the organization would look like, or the college, let me say, what the college would look like with 40 to 50 less employees. Uh, I am going to be scheduling meetings with the deans directly with the vice presidents and those departments programs who are losing entire staff um, to seek fee feedback, input, brainstorm sessions. 
Uh, this is all hands on deck. Um, we are losing people at every level of the organization. Uh, what I'm sharing now is our desire to have a college planning summit um, on June 25th and 26th. Uh, having heard that the state could be reducing the community college budgets by $1 billion, there is a need to move this planning summit up. I'm challenged because I would like to do it the last week of May, but I also realize that is finals. Uh, and so Nadia and Paul, Luis, Massa, the, the faculty leadership that are on the line, do you have any thoughts about that? Because the other thing is I wouldn't want to be accused or held accountable if we um, waited a full month, but it is already May 12th. This information frankly has not come out yet. I believe it'll come out on Friday in terms of the state budget. Um, thoughts uh, uh, really from everyone on College Council if June 25th or 26th is more realistic or uh, thoughts about moving this to the last week of May. Any Sorry, I'm just I'm just trying to think it through. I think there's pros and cons to both, obviously. Um, <clears throat> for I always kind of err on the side of doing it sooner than later at this point, but I know that there are, you know, struggles with that with, with the end of the semester. Yeah, thank, thanks, Nadia. Paul, Paul, any thoughts on that? Same. So we had originally presented these dates to um, everyone. And I think what, what if I could, well, any other thoughts from anyone else on the line? I mean, this, we would want participation from college council in these meetings. Yeah, Ricky, just for clarification, are the two days meant to repeat or two full days of planning? So there are two full days of planning. And Masa, I see your hand. I'll be with you uh, next. Um, you should be, I, I hope that I'm sharing the document um, Oh, that that says what the and I only say that Jeannie because I don't know if I'm sharing it or not. I'm trying to watch <laughs> YouTube at the same time to make sure. Yeah, I am sharing it. Okay. Oh. Um, um. So you see the agenda. What we're looking at is two full days with a number of things needed to be discussed. One of them being planning for enrollment management, frankly, during the pandemic. Planning for working remotely, there are still some things remotely. And Luis, I see your hand. I'll have you after Masa. Um, and then planning for participatory governance. That's really the piece that Susan um, and the, the team talked about today in today's presentation. And lastly, impact of the CERT vacancies, ultimately staffing on college operations. And so what we would probably do is for three to four hour sessions on each of those um, topics over the, over the course of two days. Um, does that answer your question, Jean? Yes, thank you. And you all should have this flyer um, and, and all the attachments that I, I've shared today, you should have them in your email. If you don't let me know, I'll make sure you get them. Um, Masa. I just wanted to mention that the faculty would be off, uh, many of us would be off schedule on June 25th and 26th. Uh, if you would like to do it, you know, when we are on schedule, not that anybody's going anywhere, I don't think, but uh, just to respect the people's time and contract, I just wanted to mention. Yes, thanks, Masa. And I mentioned that in a meeting with Kelly, the AFT and the uh, Academic Senate um, leadership last week. And uh, our plan is uh, using some of the CARES money, some of the uh, IEPI money, some of the Guided Pathways money that we know if we're asking faculty who are off contract to come in, which I, I hope we all agree is important, um, then we would figure out a way to compensate them accordingly. Awesome. Thank you for that. Um, Luis. Hi, Ricky. Uh, just... In regards to um, the thinking of earlier rather than later, but is it possible to do it early June, like June 4th or 5th, which is kind of 
just right after finals and still respects that stress week of uh, finals? You know, I, everything, you know, when you're dealing with an emergency like this, everything has to be on the, the table. We had already contracted with Al Solano for these dates. So we had these dates on the books for um, a manager's retreat uh, and to tackle um, the governance structure already. Um, and so the challenge, the only challenge would be, Luis, is we would want a facilitator and whether or not the facilitator. Um, and so what I'll ask Tia to do is poll, uh, poll college council as to which dates work. And I actually think we may have done this already. And June 25th and 26th are the dates that came forward. So I think early in the year we did a poll. Is that right, Tia? We oh, talked about the TSI, the the Summer Institute uh, is happening on, I think, June 5th to the 7th yeah. as well. So that's a conflict. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Nadia. Um, okay. And so this is not uh, ideal for it to be a month away, but I can tell you that information is changing so rapidly in, in our current uh, world uh, that it actually may be better to have it on June 25th and 26th to know what the virus is doing, to know um, what... Uh, the state budget is doing, you know, has the state open back up completely, has the country open back up completely. Um, I believe also with uh, Susan and Masa, there's a need to go to some of these other groups to seek funding for this. Um, and so we do need a little bit of time. Uh, what we will do is work with Tia to put out another questionnaire, but I think, frankly, that we're probably going to wind up keeping June 25th and 26th. Uh, but we, we're open to feedback is what I'm saying. It's never a good time. Uh, other questions? Oh, I see hands. Oh, I'm, um, I think we got to Nadia and Paul. Or, Paul, was there anything else you wanted to share? Yeah, I was just going to share, and it's piggybacking on what Masa said. Uh, Kelly Mayhew uh, asked me to uh, relay that May is better. And I think it's for the same reason that Masa was alluding to, of, you know, some people won't be around in June. Okay, so we're back to, so I would ask this question, um, Paul, if we do it in May, it, it would have to be the week, basically of finals, uh, because we're, we're already into the second week. We need at least a week to plan I've got a call with Al Solano today, who was going to be our facilitator. Uh, am I hearing that the recommendation of the faculty, or Paul, do you want to figure out a way to ask the faculty um, which is preferred? I'm hearing from them as well. <laughs> and I'm hearing the same thing um, in from the text I'm receiving as well, that earlier might be better than later, even though it's finals. But I think people kind of, hopefully would understand that it's going to be messy, but I think they'd rather maybe have that information in their hands or at their fingertips, even if it might change um, sooner than later. I think it'll feel more transparent that way. Okay, so let me, let me work to do this, realizing that we already had these dates set um, and further out, I actually think people can plan better than if we put this on Thursday or Friday. And, and the other thing I would remind us is that um, the last week of May, depending on how you look at things, technically is a holiday um, week. Um, so let me, let me work on trying to make it, uh, let me bring up my calendar on my other device. I wonder too, sorry, um, if there's an option to do something more immediate at the end of May and then the second day at the end of June. Well, um, yes. And the more immediate thing, Nadia, is what we're calling the emergency meeting we're calling on Monday. All right, so we're, we're calling a, an emergency meeting with the chairs and everyone in this, um, on this flyer for Monday at four o'clock. Um, and so maybe if, if I'm hearing in Paul, if you're in agreement, uh, I can absolutely set up two individual meetings uh, for this group 
and keep the original days of the 25th and 26th. Is that a is that maybe a happy medium? Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. So we we you will be receiving if you haven't done so. Well, you probably haven't because Tia's in this meeting right now. But you will Good be Monday. receiving an email for a special meeting, an emergency meeting on Monday at four o'clock that um, includes this group. Um, and when I say this group, College Council. Um, academic Senate exec, classified Senate exec, spa execs, vice presidents, chairs are being called to an emergency meeting on Monday. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that I believe begins to get at what I just heard you say, Nadia. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. And then keep it for June 25th and 26th and just try to keep every, we'll obviously just try to keep each other as updated as possible in the meantime. Yes. And, and maybe we do both. We have a meeting on Monday. We schedule something a single day for the last week of May, and then we keep these two days. Paul, how does that, Paul, um, Masa, Louise, how, how does that sound, Nadia? Sounds great to me. Sounds good to me as well. <laughs> Same here. Good. Okay. So we'll do two days with Monday being the first one. Tia, if we could identify that Thursday or Friday, um, the last week of May for, um, a, I'm going to say a three hour meeting, and then we'll keep the 25th and 26th. It, it, how do others feel about that? Jeannie representing the, and, and, and Robbie, how do you all feel about that? And, and, you know, the vice presidents, everyone. So I got one text from someone in the managers, my constituency group, and the only comment was that this should be this should begin as soon as possible. Absolutely, um, which it will and has, you know, given Monday, you all will be receiving a, well, today you'll be receiving an email about a Monday meeting. And I, I did email out a document to the same group that outlined the challenges at, at, at hand. Did everyone get a copy of that? An email sent today? I sent out an email today, um, I hope. And sometime. Campus update, scheduling uh, scheduling an emergency. I got it. Scheduling an emergency meeting, yeah. Um, and so it should outline the things that I just went, um, went over. Uh, if you didn't receive that, email me. I'll make sure that you get it. Uh, and I only inquire because I have been, uh, since we're working remotely, sometimes my emails are going into draft and not just going out. But it sounds like, Nadia, you received it, um, and which means I hope others did. If you're on the College Council and you didn't receive So that email was only sent to College Council members who were inviting. Um, certainly, you can share its contents, but the meeting that we're scheduling um, giving the capacity of Zoom is meant for the people who are on the list um, that we mentioned. Uh, Ricky, so when I when I send out that uh, invite today, I will work from that email and it will include that attachment that you also sent out earlier today. Yeah, now the chairs did not receive the email. Nadia, I would ask that you forward that email to the chairs. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, only because I just didn't have the the ability to send it to the DL to the chairs, but they will be invited and Tia will invite the chairs and, and members. Any other questions about those? I mean, the, the budget and the challenges, the need to reorg the college uh, and the fact that I'll be meeting individually with those department programs that are outlined. I know uh, the deans requested and maybe even I think the academic senate requested a list of the positions, vacancies, and SERP. Um, Roxanne, can you send that document you recreated uh, to the College Council? Folks can share that with their constituency groups. Sure. Thank you. Ricky, one follow-up question I'm being asked. Thanks. I believe these meetings are virtual, correct? I believe there was a YouTube URL up on the flyer. So the the meeting we're having on Monday is virtual for the constituency groups or what I'm calling the campus leadership. Okay. Um, the planning summit for the 25th and 26th, yes, we are planning to broadcast that via YouTube just like we're doing now. 
Thank you for clarifying. The document that I emailed out really captured what we're going to discuss on Monday. Um, so it has, it does have specifics in terms of the challenges that we're facing. Other, any other questions? So we tackled um, number six on the agenda. Uh, something more promising is an update on commencement. Denise, would you like to provide an update? We had a meeting with Marciano just uh, moments ago. Is Marciano on the line? He's not on the line? Okay. No. Okay. Um, yes, uh, we have a commencement that is in the planning under our leadership of our president and our dean. And um, this will be two, um, there will be two opportunities for our students um, to um, engage in the campus. We are planning a virtual commencement on July 17th. And we're doing it um, on the same day as our sister campuses. The time is scheduled to be 5 p.m. Uh, we're working really hard to align this effort with the, um, with with much of the structure that you're most familiar with. This will be virtual. Um, we're doing it with a company called Marching Orders who has a lot of experience in organizing them. So of course, we're all gonna need to be a little bit more flexible in how we envision that to be. Um, there's also some, excuse me, um, some talk about a second in, in person one, but that still is in consultation, trying to figure out how we're gonna be able to do that, but that would be no time this year. Um, so all the colleges are working on that. And, um, and, and that's principally um, uh, what we're doing with commencement. So we are excited that we will give our students an opportunity. These are difficult times. There were some really um, good ideas and other approaches that we are uh, considering to explore right now. But um, we are holding a virtual commencement for our students on July 17th. Um, at 5 p.m. Great. Any questions for Denise? Um, we One of the things we're also pursuing is the possibility of having something for the students on campus in person, like a drive up. Uh, we, we're going to continue to explore that and we'll communicate back uh, in the, during the next college council. But one of the um, extend uh, my sincere appreciation to Marciano and all of the folks who serve on the commencement uh, committee. Uh, we've got about 40 days to pull this off folks. And so uh, Paul and others who would traditionally participate in commencement as the campus leadership, um, what Marciano and Caesar are doing is going through our script and trying to condense what amounts to about an hour and a half program into maybe 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, and so we we are looking to do some filming um, in at the also at the end of um, May that will then be uploaded for this. Uh, the thing that I am saddened by, uh, although there's been great work put into this, uh, there's such a demand for um, caps and gowns that it doesn't look like we're going to be able to get our students the caps and gowns uh, by the time that we've got to turn in the video. But I assure you the bookstore and Marciano and his team are working to get students uh, at least their caps and, and, and tassels. So there's a lot of work underway with this to pull this off in 40 days. So thank you to Marciano and, and Denise and everybody on the commencement committee. Any questions about commencement? Hearing uh, none, let me say something real quick because there may be um, our colleagues in athletics that are hearing for the first time that that dean position is not moving forward. Um, this was what amounts to a last minute decision uh, to feel uh, a, a huge deficit that the district and the in the college are going to have related to um, a, a billion dollars being removed from the community college budget. And so extreme conditions, unfortunately, require extreme answers. Uh, it is less than ideal. I'm not happy about this. 
Um, and so I'll be meeting with athletics um, by next week. I'm gonna try to see if I can get the meeting this week, but the reality is I may not. Um, and so Aaron and Denise and Tilly and, and the entire team over there, um, Dee Dee, um, uh, Coach Charlins and others, um, Chris, if you all are hearing this, uh, Alan, I think is on the line. If you all are hearing this for the first time, like this is literally fresh off the, the um, press, uh, having been in a meeting all day this morning uh, to talk about the budget. And our number one goal is avoiding layoffs, folks. Like it is that extreme that we're making every reduction possible to ensure that our contract employees uh, have a job during this very trying time. And so it is less than ideal. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not supportive of us not having that Dean, but it, the, the, the reality is that um, having the position would mean that someone doesn't. Uh, and I wouldn't wanna send anyone home to their families, uh, particularly contract employees, because we know adjuncts are already in that situation. And, and, and I'm not happy about that either. And I'm not happy about the Nances um, you know, this is a very unfortunate matter. And I know it hit, it hit, it hits home because my brother and sister-in-law lost their job um, along with 30 um, plus other million Americans. And so this, this is a struggle of sleepless nights to ensure that we preserve our college and our district so that we all have a place of employment to come to. Um, and so I, I hate that you have to hear this on this college council. Uh, I'm going to get to you all as quickly as I can. This is uh, hot off the presses. Any questions? Seeing none, um, going to number 10, uh, college council summer meetings. Um, I think it's imperative, and I've already heard from our faculty leadership that there's concerns about planning going on over the summer without including um, the faculty. One, I would never um, dream of making decisions without including all of our constituency groups. And to that end, uh, I'd like to propose that College Council needs to continue to meet over the summer. These are extreme emergency con um, conditions. We need to stay in com complete communication. I'm, I'm on the YouTube live right now. There are over 50 people that are tuning in to see and learn about what's going on with the college. And so what you what you see on your screen now in the agenda should be future meeting dates, which would keep the pattern of us meeting every two weeks. And what I'd like to do is call that to a vote, if I could. Um, and so if I could have a motion to approve that college council should continue to meet under these, um, under this emergency situation to ensure that the constituency groups are, uh, I see the hand me. Ricky, uh, Ms. Luis, a uh, motion. Okay, so I, I, I think I have a motion, if I could, by Jeannie. I have a second by Luis. Um, any further discussion about college council continuing to meet every two weeks so that we keep all the constituency groups informed of um, the planning that's going on? Hearing none, uh, I would ask that those in favor uh, indicate by raising your hand on the participant list. Um, and I would ask that those, because there's a couple of folks who don't have their hands raised that are part of college council, um, if there are any in opposition to raising your hand, or raising your hand, to us continuing to meet, um, please um, indicate so, so that I can know. Um, are, there, are there anyone who would like to sustain, uh, sustain from meeting the vote? Hearing none, uh, motion passes unanimously for College Council to continue to meet over the summer so that we keep the constituency groups updated Thank you all very much. And then lastly, something that I hope is, uh, is uh, positive. Uh, many of you have communicated to us that our students or even our employees don't have access to, to Wi-Fi. And so we took this to the district and I'm happy to report and I'll share the screen. I hope, actually, let me, let me go here. 
we go here. And I want to thank Caesar and Kim for making it possible to Here we go to put this flyer together. Um, this already went out on social media. I heard back from some folks and I always value feedback. Everything we want to do, we want to do in the spirit of equity, social justice. And there was some language on the on the on the form um, wasn't intentional. But, you know, we have great colleagues who remind us. And so we, we, we did go back to the drawing board and try to soften this up as it relates to social justice and equity. And um, the gist of it is that now folks will be able to access a Wi-Fi lot, uh, which is on 16th and C, uh, just south of the Child Development Center, uh, where uh, if you need Wi-Fi or students need Wi-Fi, they'll be able to um, go and park and do their assignments. Um, certainly, health and safety is always a concern or at the top priority. And so we will be practicing social di distancing. College officials will be monitoring the lot. Uh, any questions about this document? And Caesar, I would ask you to send this back out to the campus and repost on social media with the current uh, changes that you and Kim uh, did. And thank you for the for the great faculty who uh, emailed me to bring took equity into consideration. Any, any questions, uh, Rob, uh, Robbie? Mine's really quick. Caesar, when that's resent, can it be an accessible flyer or PDF so that faculty can um, easily insert it into their Canvas shells? Yes, absolutely. Thanks. And Robbie, did you was your hand still up or did you have a question? You're muted, Robbie. Uh, no, I didn't know my hand was up. Okay, no worries. Sorry about that. Um, any questions about the Wi-Fi lot? You know, these are all examples of ideas that have um, come from classified professionals, faculty, uh, same with the $30,000 that we were able to identify. And I would be remiss if I didn't give kudos to Roxanne, who's doing an amazing job at, uh, as the Vice President of Administrative Services and also the treasurer of the City College Foundation. We were able to use some funds uh, remaining from Jim Senegal uh, coming from the San Diego Foundation and our very own employees donated resources. And that's how we came up with the $30,000 that's going, uh, going out to uh, our undocumented students, our DACA students, our dreamers. Caesar, you've got a hand. Is your hand just still raised? Did you want to chime in about the Wi-Fi lots or anything? Um, nope. I think let me lower my hand. Uh, we, I believe that we, any other questions comments about the wi-fi lots uh ricky this is majda yes um do we need a, a, a wi-fi passcode on this or is it in, i mean is that something that they need no it's the same um city college wi-fi right. that we change every semester it'll be but, that same password right but is that going to be communicated um, yes, it will be. There'll be someone monitoring the, the lot. The reason why, Majda, we didn't put it on the flyer is just, you know, there is concern that City College is an open campus and we don't want to invite folks to, to you know, this lot is for students and employees. It's not for um, the general public, uh, as we do have a uh, very serious matter surrounding the campus that warrants us um, communicating to the individual student about the password and the like. That's why you don't see the password on the flyer. Understand. Thank you. But it's going to be communicated to students. Yes. And any employee who comes, because there'll be, to some degree or another, a check-in process uh, to ensure that the person is a student um, and that um, you know, they're using the area for its intended purposes because technically the campus is closed to the public. Any other questions about the Li-Fi 
Wi-Fi lo lots. Hearing none, uh, we've got eight minutes, uh, which I'm surprised because there was a lot that we covered. Uh, are there any questions for the good of the order or any announcements? Hearing no uh, announcements or updates, again, I want to thank uh, each of you um, for your leadership on College Council. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do, but we've been doing an amazing job. I am so proud of our college and the way that we were able to respond to this pandemic, to support our students, to support our colleagues. Uh, I'm looking forward to Paula and Don Long um, working with their respective committees and constituency groups to put together uh, some kind of professional development opportunities for everyone on campus. We've secured upwards of $200,000 between IEPI, between uh, Guided Pathways, between uh, the CARES Act uh, funds. Uh, because if this is the reality that we are going to support students in, we want to make sure that we use equity minded approaches uh, in this virtual uh, world that we live in. And so I look forward to the work that Paula and, and Don and others are going to embark on uh, to support our faculty. Uh, we're looking to uh, identify as many as 10 uh, faculty mentors, we're looking to identify classified mentors to help those individuals who need additional support uh, to continue to operate remotely. I'd also like to say that Human Resources will be sending out a communication through District Governance Council. I know I've received a number of emails about my communication Monday and last week about the campus reopening. Folks, there is not a rush to reopen campus. In fact, to some people, uh, the campus has never closed. What we wanna do is begin to have the conversations about what kind of health and safety, ergonomics, um, what kind of support do we need? Because at some point or another, we are going to return to campus and we wanna begin that communication that dialogue. And so HR is going to be leading a task force comprised of faculty, classified professionals, administrators, the like, um, of what does it look like to begin opening? There is no rush to open, let me be clear. Uh, however, we do need to begin that process to, to say, what do we need to have in place? Because tomorrow is not going to look like yesterday and we need to plan accordingly. With that said, um, if there are no questions, let me also let me again, once again, thank you all for your efforts. Be safe, be well, and more importantly, please be kind to one another. This is an emergency. There's a great deal of anxiety, and we are all under a tremendous amount of anxiety as we look to continue to support our families, our students, and our community. I'm so proud of each and every one of you in our college. Be safe, be well, and I'll see you in another two weeks. Thank you.